Welcome to the Tool Hut channel, everybody. Today, we have a 2016 Chevrolet Equinox. Put a uh, power steering control module has been installed, and I'm here to program it. Stand by. While you got a second, why don't you go ahead and click that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell if you want to be notified when stuff comes out. I welcome any questions or comments you may have down below. Okay, so th my name's Sam from Tool Hut USA. All of the equipment that you see in our videos is available for purchase on our website. If it's not on our website, just send me a message and I'll get you some prices, whatever we need to do. Stand by. All right, let's get this ball rolling here. So I like to start with doing a pre-scan on a vehicle. I am a mobile programmer, so I don't know the reason this rack was replaced or power steering control module was replaced. I just know that I was called to program it. So I like to do a couple of things. Uh, read the codes. The codes aren't that important as uh, does it communicate, are there any modules that don't communicate, stuff like that. So I like to just do a quick scan here and typically I'll save the report and I'll also uh, clear the codes. They're going to get cleared when it's done programming anyway so it really doesn't make a whole lot of difference. Clearing the codes, not clearing the codes. So people ask me why I clear codes. But they're going to get cleared anyway because they're going to have codes from the programming event. So I just, like I say, I just uh, go through and read the codes here. It does have quite a few codes in here. don't really see anything that's alarming so let's go ahead and get SPS started here and let's get this thing programmed of course we gotta load all the Java and all that good stuff so yeah I took you right from where this page pops up so you get to see the whole whole thing other than the, than the login procedure hopefully you can figure out how to log in if you're gonna gonna do this so we're gonna choose j2534 tool I am using the MDI2 for this function that's what I use for most of my General Motors stuff I'm going to go to Chevrolet, it's a 16, it is a light duty truck I guess, it's called Equinox, it's a little, little truck I guess. Let it communicate with the vehicle here, that is the correct VIN, I have a habit of always checking my VIN. Now I do see electronic power steering up at the top, but I like to scroll down through the list and just see what all is programmable here. So don't really see anything related to the power steering control module. You'd be surprised sometimes some of the stuff you'll find, don't you? Scroll through the list. We'll go back up to the power steering control module. Now we notice that we got some more options here. We've got a programming and a configuration. And we prepare a controller for removal. It's always interesting when it says prepare a control module for removal. Especially when the new one's already in there. So 
I just glance the calibration numbers. They're always different. Uh, sometimes they're the same, but they're always almost always different. Not really important what we're changing them to, other than it's been specific and it's what General Motors has said that they're getting for numbers. The numbers really don't mean anything. I just like to. A lot of times you'll see an asterisk with a a one or something like that. Kind of indicates, from what I've learned, uh, that that module is blank. So it's not just remanufactured. They've actually blanked that part of the the module, so you can program it completely. These usually don't take too long to program. I've done a couple of them. You'll see it moving along. I did, did, did not speed this part up, so we're just going to let it do its thing here. Oh, The estimated time remaining, you see, is going a lot faster than the clock is. But, you know, it's moving right along here. I do have a maintainer on it. I always put a maintainer on it when I'm programming. See it kind of slowed down for a second there. So a lot of times they'll start at the beginning and then they'll zip right across. Just different, different ones. I don't know why we're doing so many power steering control modules lately. Uh, I don't know if they're not being built right, but all of the manufacturers seem to have a power steering control module problem or failure rate. So we're programming more and more modules all the time on these cars. So it's getting almost done here. I did look up the service information on this, and there, uh, I might put it in here if I think about it the procedure for doing this, but it's essentially program it, configure it, and set it up. Just let it do its thing here. This is I'm done. I'm going to go ahead and proceed with the, the same VIN because I know I got to at least do the configuration through SPS there. Go back to our parts chain control module, go down and choose the configuration. I want to see what else is there. Yeah, so we just got a setup function that's in there as well. So go ahead and hit next. It launches a special application. This is preparing, e performing ECU configuration. So you don't really do anything. And then it says it's done. So we're going to go ahead and proceed with the same VIN again. We did cycle the key off. Let it power down here. Electronic power steering. Now we're going to get out to the setup function. So the only thing we didn't do was prepare it for removal. string wheel is straight ahead so what's the key on so, so make sure the driver's door could be open and closed press next that's kind of interesting did you exchange both the steering gear and the actuator yes they did it ask if it's equipped with flex ride um, not real sure we looked it up in the option list and we didn't really see anything that say anything about flex ride so this is turn off the key and take it out of the ignition open and close the driver's door what they're wanting to, the bus to do they're wanting the bus to go to sleep for so give it a 45 seconds here so we're gonna let it wind down here
this is a shop that we did quite a bit of work for, a decent amount of work for, I guess. And we usually don't have too many problems with their stuff, but I typically don't get into the reason they're replacing something unless something goes wrong. So I turn the ignition on and press next. So I want you to center the steering wheel between five and five. So five degrees to the left, five degrees to the right, and then hit next. Remove the hands, start the engine and press next. Well, you want it all the way to the stop position to the left and then press next. Kind of interesting, they got an Opal logo on their steering wheel. Then all the way to the stop on the right. Hit next. And then they want it centered. And press next. Turn off the ignition. Remove the key. Guess what? Open and close the driver's door. I'm just going to let the bus go to sleep again. So 45 seconds again. And after we're done here, we'll go back and check it for codes again. Check and clear the codes again. So we'll get GDS2 open back up. Nice thing about doing it this way is we don't have to change interfaces or nothing like that. I like using the factory tooling if I if I got it available. It says turn the ignition on and press next. And just hit finish. We're back to our screen that says we're done. So we're just going to cancel because I don't want it to log back in again here if I if I need to. Let's open GDS2 back up here. Let it auto ID the car. Back to vehicle diagnostics, vehicle DTC information. And we're just going to do a system scan here again. I'm not going to get real involved here. I have started it up and swung the uh, string wheel back and forth. And we notice that there are no DTCs in the power steering control module. There is codes in the other modules. Lost communication with stuff, um, which could be a result of the uh, programming event. So we're just going to go ahead and clear these codes and just get them, get them out of there. Got a whole bunch of history codes, passed and failed type codes. So we're just going to add them all, and we're just going to do a rapid clear, I guess you want to call it. Give it a second, it'll refresh the list here. So, there we go. We'll go back home and close out of here and call it done. So, have a great day. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe to the channel. If you want to see some more videos, hit the thumbs up, thumbs down. Have a great day.